Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before the Lord with joyful song. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before the Lord with joyful song. And know, and know that He is God and we are His people. And know, and know that He is God and we are His people. Enter His gates with thanksgiving. Come into His courts with joyful praise. Enter His gates with thanksgiving. Come into His courts with joyful praise. And know, and know that He is God and we are His people. And know, and know that He is God and we are His people. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before the Lord with joyful song. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before the Lord with joyful song. And know, and know that He is God and we are His people. And know, and know that He is God and we are His people. Enter His gates with thanksgiving. Come into His courts with joyful praise. Enter His gates with thanksgiving. Come into His courts with joyful praise. And know, and know that He is God and we are His people. And know, and know that He is God and we are His people. And know, and know that He is God and we are His people. And know. And know that He is God and we are His people. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before the Lord with joyful song. This is the day that you have made. Whatever comes, I won't complain. For all my hope is in your name. Your joy awaits my praise. I give thanks for all you have done, and I will sing of your mercy and your love. Your love is unfailing, Lord. I am grateful. When I was down, you brought me out. You set my feet on high. Stand. You are my God, your faithfulness, my solid rock. Give thanks now, I give thanks for all you have done. And I will sing of your mercy and your love. Your love is unfailing, Lord, I am grateful. I give thanks for all you have done. the heavens open, heavens open, so let our lives declare the love of God has spoken over us, and as we lift our hands, the heavens open, heavens open, so let our lives declare the of our God has spoken over us. I give thanks to all you have to you, my Lord. Your mercy and your love, your love is unfailing. Lord, I am grateful. I 
Hey, good morning, Northlake family. Welcome to worship. My name is Chris and I'm one of the ministers here. Thanks so much for joining us for worship today. And here's wishing a happy Valentine's Day to you, my dearly beloved church family. Much love to everyone. So go on and show your church family some love down in the comments and say hello to everybody. And go ahead and let us know if there's anything you'd like us to be praying about as well, either in the comments below or by texting, emailing, or calling up one of our ministers or elders. So this morning we'll share in a prayer for the family led by our children's minister, Crystal O'Neill, along with Sharon Z, Abby Warren, and Doris Graham. And then we'll sing some songs together. Then Ike Reeser, our preaching minister, will share some teaching he's prepared from Luke 4. Following that, one of our elders, Neil Stubblefield, will uh, lead our communion time together. Uh, but before we get started, I want to kick things off with a special song presentation for our Valentine's Day worship. After all, how many times does Valentine's Day fall on a Sunday, right? So I want to share with you a song written by my great uncle Chris, maybe about two years ago. And yes, I said great uncle Chris. That's my grandfather's brother on my mother's side, uh, who was a member of the Isley Brothers back in the day. Yep, that's right. It's true. I'm related to the Isley Brothers. And uh, one of the songs you're um, likely most familiar with is their 1959 song, Shout. You know, the, you know, you make me want to shout, kick my heels up and throw my hands up and, you know, you know how it goes. Well, uh, anyway, uh, my great uncle Chris is uh, responsible for writing and producing much of their uh, music, primarily in the 70s and 80s, and had a really fun music career and uh, studied music composition in New York City after graduating high school and uh, our hometown of Cincinnati. <laughs> and uh, his older sister, uh, my aunt Elaine, uh, married one of the other Isley brothers as well, uh, Uncle Rudolph. So uh, the connections with the Isley brothers are deep in our family. And uh, if you're an R&B fan, uh, you'll likely be, be familiar with some of the uh, their other music from the 70s and 80s also. Um, anyway, uh, Uncle Chris has been producing solo for the past several years now out of his beautiful home in Westchester County, New York. And uh, uh, the lyrics to this song I want to share with you this morning seems perfectly fitting to kick off our Valentine's Day worship today, and it's called Show Somebody Love. So uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that story, and thank you again so much for joining us for worship this morning, and uh, let's all do everything we can to show somebody love today and every day. So let's take a listen. Show somebody 
Hi, North Lake Church community. I'm Crystal O'Neill. I'm the children's minister uh, here at North Lake Church of Christ. And to, today with me, I have um, Abby Warren that works with me. And I also have Doris Graham and Sharon Z. And uh, the four of us have been leading um, our online Bible classes that have been going on with our children uh, during this time of physical separation and also our in-person gatherings. And uh, we, we wanted to take some time today to um, lead a special prayer for our families and our children. So please pray with me. Father, uh, we thank you for the way that you are with us, even when we are apart. Father, help us to take time in our families and in our new routines to nurture the spiritual health in our own lives and nurture the spiritual development in the lives of our children. Lord, we thank you for this uh, way that we can meet and pray together um, through Zoom, but still be together one in spirit. And we pray, Lord, that our families stay uh, together and grow in your spirit. Please help our families to grow in faith and in love as they spend this uh, more time together. And we pray, Lord, for our church family as we grow. Um, help us, Lord, to, um, to feel the closeness with each other because you're with us and you're with each of us. And we thank you, God, for this comfort. We pray, Lord, for um, our communities. We pray, Lord, for the community around each one of us and help us, Lord, to uh, be sensitive to uh, our neighbors and um, the needs of others and and to just be drawn to, to um, be a friend to those who need a friend in this time. Uh, give us wisdom in how we can reach out to people around us in this challenging time and fill us with your, your wisdom, your love, your patience, your guidance in all that we do. Help us to hear your voice and walk with you and um, just help us Lord to grow, not to stay where we are, but to be enlightened um, each day as we see new hope. Please Lord help us. Um, Help us to be sensitive to uh, families in our church family that um, might need that extra care and help us, Lord, to be sensitive to our leaders and to remember to pray for our leaders, our, the leaders of our church, the leaders in, um, in our communities, the leaders of America and the leaders around the world. And we pray, Lord, that you will continue to guide the leaders and the helpers and uh, we praise you God because you are the helper of all the helpers of all the, the um, nurses and doctors and uh, people making important government decisions and we pray Lord for your guidance and that your ways are followed and we pray Lord um, that we will hear you more and more throughout the day and walk with you more and more throughout the day in the name of Jesus we pray Father, uh, I pray as we continue through this difficult time uh, and we're looking towards the future that you would continue to be with us um, and continue to guide our steps. Uh, Father, I know many families have had to make difficult decisions through all of this, um, and I pray that you would be with our parents and our family leaders to um, give them the wisdom they need um, to lead their families. God, um, I pray as kids are going back to school, uh, that you would uh, keep our kids safe and keep our families safe um, and help us, um, Father, just follow in your footsteps um, and help us to make uh, wise decisions um, and decisions that um, show your glory. Father, we're grateful for the guidance that you've given us uh, during this time. We are so thankful for the technology that we have that we can stay in touch during this time. We're thankful for the in-person uh, activities we've been able to have at the thing. Um, thinking back over vacation Bible schools and times to get together for the festival and 
um, where we have the thank we're thankful for the property that we have and the big fields where we've been able to be with each other in the parking lots and we ask you <clears throat> to bless us as we make decisions and in, in getting together and but we are just grateful for what you've given us and we are grateful especially for Jesus and the sacrifice he's made and we pray in his name amen
Gospel of Luke, after Jesus is baptized and the Spirit of God descends like a dove, and after he faces testing in the wilderness, then he begins to teach, and people are impressed. Jesus soon schedules a visit to his hometown of Nazareth, and this is found in Luke chapter 4. Now, why does he go to Nazareth? Well, think about it. When a politician's ready to formally announce the beginning of their political campaign, where do they usually go to make the announcement? They go to their hometown. And so for Luke, when Jesus goes to Nazareth, this marks the beginning of his great campaign. The die is cast. He's now in pursuit of that goal for which he came, our salvation. So what will he say there in Nazareth? Back home, he goes to the synagogue. And on the Sabbath day, he stands to read scripture like he must have done many times through the years. And I imagine a woman nudging her husband. You know, I taught him when he was in the third grade. Well, Jesus takes the scroll of the prophet Isaiah and he unwinds this huge scroll. And there are no chapter or verse markings and all the words are crammed together. But Jesus knew right where he wanted to go and he found the place and he began to read. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This passage is found in Isaiah chapter 61. And through these words, Jesus announces both the character and the purpose of his ministry. He would preach and heal. He would bring a message of hope for the poor and the poor in spirit. The physically and the spiritually blind were to see. Those shackled in sins of their own making and those oppressed and imprisoned by other people's sins are going to be released. And Jesus' ministry would provide freedom from everything that cripples human life. And I wonder if those listening in the synagogue that day thought this sounded as impractical as many seem to think that it sounds today. I wonder if they thought, well, that's a nice speech, Jesus. 
You should be a little more realistic. Did they take Jesus any more seriously than we do today's politicians and their promises? Well, the last phrase Jesus reads from Isaiah, the year of the Lord's favor, was an Old Testament term for the year of Jubilee. As a culmination of all the feasts and festivals, God had instructed the Israelites that every 50 years they were to celebrate what they were to call a Jubilee year. And during the Jubilee year, they were to free all slaves, forgive all debts, and all land was to revert back to its original family owners. Israel never, as far as we know, celebrated a Jubilee year, which I guess that's not surprising. I mean, what kind of faith would you have to have to practice Jubilee? I'm sure it was an easy thing to keep putting off. At first, they probably said, has it been 50 years already? No, I I think that's next year. And then before you knew it, Jubilee was just a faint, hoped-for memory. Well, up to this point in this fourth chapter of the Gospel of Luke, we've only heard the adult Jesus quote scripture. We haven't heard him speak any of his own thoughts. What will he say? And these are his first recorded words in Luke. He says, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Today. The time for Jubilee is today. The time for God's purposes to be put into practice is today. The time for God's promises of salvation and healing, it's today. So don't put it all off for some other place and some other time. Start living this way today. You know, we're going to find out later in this story, his home church doesn't respond well to this. After initial positive feelings, they don't like it when Jesus reminds them that God's good promises are for everybody. Jubilee is not just for their congregation, their friends, and their people. Jubilee is for everybody. But other people would take Jesus seriously. His first followers believed him, even if they, like us, often underperform. They understood that what Jesus preaches in Nazareth is their life's work. You know, if you ask Jesus what his job was, and if he spoke Spanish, I imagine he could speak Spanish, but If he had said it in Spanish, he might have said, Predazon, Predazon, to preach and to heal, just like this great ministry that we support in Catacombas, Honduras. And so our job is to continue his ministry of Predazon, of preaching and healing. Christians, as Christians, we look to Jesus for our vocation. So that means we're to preach and heal in Honduras, but we're also to preach and heal in Atlanta. And we're to preach and heal in Tucker. We're to be concerned with the spiritual and with the physical. It's a whole gospel for a whole people. Now Luke is going to show us throughout his gospel, and then in Acts, that Jesus' followers understood that the time for Jubilee is today. That's why Luke is going to mention twice at the very first of Acts, that the church shared what they had and everybody in the church had what they needed. What does that look like for us today? God wants us to share the good things that God wants to give, spiritual and physical, a whole gospel for a whole people. And God wants to share this life with everybody, especially with folks we think are very different from ourselves. He's told us what our very vocation is to be, to preach and to heal. And if we do that, then we begin to experience today what we hope to have completely and forever. But remember, as Jesus reminded his home church in Nazareth, if you want the Jubilee life, you have to want the Jubilee life for everybody. And that's challenging, but that's what it means to follow Jesus. Well, Jesus' words in Nazareth announce what he will take on as his ministry and what will be his legacy. And for those of us who follow Christ, this becomes our job description and our hope to proclaim good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. 
Next week, I want to go a little deeper into this passage. I think there's so much more for us to learn here. Until then, may God bless you in your week and bring us back together soon. When I survey the wondrous cross On which the Prince of Glory died My rich escape, I count the loss Good morning, North Lake family. I'm Neil Stubblefield, one of your shepherds, and I'm glad to be with you today as we share communion together. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, we read that following the temptations by Satan in the wilderness for 40 days, that Jesus returns to his hometown of Nazareth. On the Sabbath, he enters the synagogue there and is handed the scroll of the words of the prophet Isaiah, from which he reads aloud to the gathered congregation. Join me as I read the words that Jesus read to them and further from the 61st chapter of that book. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a spirit of fainting. So they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Jesus reveals to his listeners that he is the one the prophet refers to and that Isaiah's words written nearly 700 years before are now by being fulfilled in him. What wonderful news for them and for us today that Jesus is the one promised, 
the one who completed God's plan to redeem us back to him. It's his son atoning sacrifice, the sacrifice on the cross that we celebrate with millions of Christians around the world today. Join me now in prayer. Father, thank you for being in our midst this morning. As we repeat what Jesus instructed his disciples, do this in remembrance of me. May our hearts blend as one with all those who take this bread and this cup today as we celebrate the good news foretold by the prophets of the coming of Christ, his life, his death, and his resurrection that leads us back to joyful, eternal life with you. In his name, amen. The bread, his body broken for our iniquities. The wine, his blood, which washes away all sin. Thank you for joining me in this Lord's Supper. Have a blessed week. Precious cornerstone, sure foundation. You are faithful to the end. We are waiting on you, Jesus. We believe you're all to us. Holy Son of God, sent from heaven, hope and mercy. Let the righteousness of God be a holy flame that burns. Let the saving love of Christ be the measure of our lives. We believe your all to us. When this passing world is over, we will see. Be the measure of our lives, we be.